A fairground ride consists of four carriages connected to a central vertical pole and is going to be turning because the direction of rotation is shown. A motor rotates the central pole, so each one will move. Okay, great. The distance is given as 3.2 meters. Oh, we're going to label that. Distance from middle of each carriage to the center of the pole. So this is going to be 3.2 over there. So let's label 3.2 meters. When they are moving, they each carriage experience a force of air resistance of 85 newtons. That means, uh, although all the carriages are kind of moving in this direction, so draw a little green arrow, there will be a force opposing it, and that will be a frictional force of 85 newtons. And not just that one carriage, all of them are moving, right? At a certain velocity. Well, so you say at a certain speed. Speed, but there's opposing force, 85 in the opposite direction to the direction of rotation. So 85 and 85. Okay, we got our diagrams down. Assuming there are no other significant resistive forces, okay. Which torque does the motor need to apply to the pole to keep the system rotating at a constant maximum speed? Wow, this one is like rotational dynamics a bit already. Okay, we stay calm first and we say, okay, what are we trying to find? Torque, all right? By who? By the motor. In order to rotate at constant maximum speed. So that means the net torque should be zero. Constant maximum speed. So the motor needs to apply. Why Why the motor need to apply? Imagine this. Uh, I turn off the Ferris wheel and this is still turning. But with this drag force or resistive force, eventually it will stop turning. But we don't want that. We want it to keep turning. So we need the motor to give it a push at maybe a certain torque to keep it rotating at that same constant speed. And this torque of the motor must oppose the torque of all these frictional forces. So maybe if you want to find the torque, hmm, we want in equilibrium, right? Equilibrium means you're turning at a, a steady speed. So whatever the motor needs to supply should equal to the total torque due to these frictional forces. And what would that be? Well, let's see. So the torque of the motor should is clockwise. Uh, let's assume it's no, sorry. It's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be clockwise torque or moment. And this frictional force, you see the direction of all the orange arrows all pointing in this direction. That's anti-clockwise. So I'm gonna add a little anti-clockwise to just remind myself which direction we're looking at. So how do you find the torque of friction? Firstly, there's four carriages. One, two, three, four. So it's gonna be four of them. And each force contributes a anti-clockwise moment. So let's say this 85 Newton, hmm, anti-clockwise moment. Down here, anti-clockwise moment. And each, you get the idea. Like each of them contributes a force times distance. Then we think, okay, each force contributes force times distance because a reminder, torque or moment equals to the force, perpendicular force times distance, which is just nice. Everything's perpendicular. So four times of four carriages, 85 Newton times 3.2. And with that, we should get a moment of 1088 Newton. Okay, let's go and see whether we can find any answers for this or not. Let's see. So 1088, if we run it off to 2SF, the closest we'll get is 1090. So that will be answer D. Okay, so remember, stay calm, motor got torque, you can have frictional forces also, frictional torque, but you want to keep that equilibrium, so equilibrium means clockwise equals to anti-clockwise. This is, oh, this is by the way, rotational equilibrium. Rotational equilibrium. All right. So I think that's all for this question. Hope that's helpful for you. Any doubts, any comments, any other methods, feel free to comment down below. But that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.